Hello guys, my name is Cameron. Welcome to Spaced Out Gaming. And today, if you guys haven't noticed, uh, I have a haircut, first off, so I'm not gonna be showing my hair for the next like three videos just because uh, I kinda wanna get straightened out because a little bit of it from, because my girlfriend cut my hair, and a little bit of it is kind of off center, so I wanna make sure that it all looks nice and amazing by the time I actually show it off in video. This is the Roadblock End of the Line 2016 review and my reaction, my rating for it, obviously. And I will be recording one more video after this, which will be going up tomorrow morning. Um, this is right after Roblox ended, line ended. I'm not even kidding, like, just now it ended. Um, it was nuts, I loved it. Um, there, I, I would've liked some things going better, but whatevs. Um, shit, I'm trying to think of what my thing was. Uh, let's see, let's go look at the predictions. Okay, 0-1, one 1-1, one one, uh, 1-2, one 2 and 2, 3 and 2, 3 and 3, 4 and 3. I won! Yes, I ended up 4 and 3 in the predictions, which, I mean, I'm not versing anybody in these, but I do like actually ending up with a positive score. Uh, and we are going to jump into the first match on the kickoff show, Big Cass versus Rusev. Um, well... I didn't record a lot of stuff for this match. I didn't put a lot of stuff onto this because I'm stupid. Um, it was a pretty good match, though. I really liked it. Um, Enzo, when him and Cass came out, he talked a lot of shit about Lana. I loved it because, honestly, she is a bit... She is booked as a bit of a whore sometimes. I'm not saying WWE has a thing with that, but, I mean, they probably do. Uh, but it was really good. Uh... Big Cass and Rusev were fighting out in the crowd, and then Enzo got knocked over by Lana after Rusev got back in, and then faked like he hit her in the leg. Rusev pretty much destroyed Enzo at that point. Big Cass went to check if he's okay, which is a stupid mistake, and I, I kind of don't like the way they're booking this feud still. It's kind of stupid, and then Big Cass lost by countout, so I'm down one on this so far. Um, I Overall, I give this match probably about a four. I know it's really low. It's the lowest rating I've ever given one of these. Um, mainly for the fact that I would have rather seen Rusev win clean or Big Cash just win in general. Um, because honestly, if he keeps using his wife to help him win, it's going to kind of piss me off. Um, the New Day versus Seamus and Cesaro. <laughs> If you guys don't follow me on Twitter at the Game Station Five because of one of my old channel names, um, you guys obviously didn't see how I reacted to this match. Uh, first off, I'm giving this match about an eight. I, I would give it a ten, but New Day talked a little bit too much before it, so now nah, I'm just kidding. It's a ten. It's it's a bloody fucking ten. So much. Uh, if you guys don't know, last Tuesday, uh, the New Day passed the record for the longest title reign in WWE history, passing. Who was it? Demolition, because Demolition's suing the company, so that's kind of the only reason they won. They passed it. Um, passing Demolition for the record, well, tying them Tuesday at 478, ending their streak today at 483. I kind of spoiled it. Um, but yeah, uh, New Day kind of talked a lot of shit, uh, said a lot of stupid shit like they always do, you know, their stupid shit. Okay, um, sorry. Uh, Sheamus and Cesaro came out, and by the way, I love the way they come out now, you know, Sheamus, or Cesaro comes out first, and then he gets ready to tear his shirt off, and then Sheamus' music hits, and then as they both are on the ramp together at the start of it, he rips off his shirt, and it goes into the, like, shirt thing, you know, the Cesaro section shirt, or whatever, um, and it's really cool, I love the way they're entering now, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's really awesome, and it fits them, you know, with being this really strange pairing for a tag team but i mean like dude they are killing it as a tag team they're one of they're my favorite tag on raw right now that is just kind of like out there and random and yeah it was shocking to see them get paired up and i was not expecting it to go this far or how it ended this uh tonight on the match but it was awesome i loved it and i'm hoping that new day's gimmick can get changed now to a heel gimmick which would be awesome um yeah, uh, for a lot of the match though, Sheamus and Cesaro were on top, and I was kind of like, yeah, this is what I want, I want to see this, hell fucking yeah, this is what I need, you know, Sheamus and Cesaro to be kicking ass and taking names of the tag team division on Raw, which they were for pretty much the entire match this match, so yeah, uh, 
Seamus was going to hit Kofi Kingston as Kofi was going to break up, I believe, a sharpshooter. And uh, ended up hitting Cesaro. Or Cesaro was getting ready for the swing. One of those two. Uh, and then he accidentally hit Cesaro, uh, giving New Day a very good chance. Uh, and as Cesaro was kind of over in the turnbuckle, Woods jumped up and kicked him. Because obviously they're kind of going for a heel turn with them, but not at the same time. Uh, and then big ending, and Cesaro kicked out at two, like uh, the beast he is. Um, and then uh, Kofi ended up getting tagged in, and then Cesaro hit the Cesaro swing on him, which, have I told you guys, I love the Cesaro swing. It's like my favorite move that's not a finisher. Uh, there was a bro kick to Big E to keep him from getting in the way. Uh, sharpshooter to Kofi, and Kingston tapped as uh, Woods jumped up on the apron. To distract the ref with this stupid trauma. Uh, and before I continue on with this, guys, I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six pages front and back in my tiny little notebook here, uh, completely filled with stuff for this. So, yeah. Uh, there was a weird neutralizer setup. I, I can't exactly remember how he set it up, but it was like, it looked like he was going for a power bomb almost, or Kofi was going for a move, one of those two. And then he just turned it, he's like, fuck it, turns it into a neutralizer and hits it. Uh, and then Big E broke that up. Uh, Woods uh, came in and took a bro kick for Kofi. Uh, and then pretty much right after that, uh, there was an SOS by Kofi straight to Cesaro and, or Sheamus, and Sheamus kicked out. And then they... Genius. This is the genius icing on top of this fucking cake. Well, okay. Icing on the second layer of this cake. And then the third layer is what I'm going to be talking about in a second. Um, they faked the tag. Same, Seamus and Cesaro. And it was so beautifully, like, they perfectly had this set up. Like, Seamus was going for the tag and Cesaro pulled away just in time. So that it looked like they did, but they didn't. And the ref counted it. Or didn't. I don't freaking really know. Uh, and then... Kofi hit Trouble in Paradise to Cesaro and roll and started pinning him, but he was not the legal man. Um, and then roll it by Sheamus. One, two, three, and the tag team reign of the New Day ends at 483 annoying days for me because the rest of this this whole year with them was terrible. But yeah, uh, Cesaro went up, hugged them, said, "Congrats, you guys, you fought hard," and then. Um, New Day, you know, they ended their reign at 483 days, and then, um, it was, it was really freaking nice to see this end, and it, I feel like it can set up the New Day in a different way. I want them to kind of hit the rematch clause really quick, just so I can see them lose again, not for, not trying to be a dick about it, but, like, I want them to lose, so that way, if they do, you know, that way they can change their gimmick a bit, because it's kind of boring. Um... And Sheamus kind of grabbed both the titles from them and started cheering and stuff. And Cesaro went out to the Cesaro section and cheered. And then as Sheamus was finally up the ramp, Cesaro ran up, grabbed his title, and started cheering. And it, it was glorious, you know. It was awesome seeing them finally get the titles and, you know, get to cheer on with that. Um, but after all that happened, it was a backstage segment with KO. He's being asked by the chick. Uh, do you think your title reign is going to end tonight and stuff? And he kind of yelled at her and was a dick. Uh, Jericho came up. Uh, KO get, Kevin Owens gave him a scarf. Jericho kind of looked at it, threw it on the ground, and left. Sh KO looked pretty heartbroken. <laughs> at this point, I was tied one to one in my predictions, um, and I'm so happy Sheamus and Star won. I honestly didn't know if they were actually gonna pull the trigger with that or not, and so I'm I'm really happy they did. Uh, next up was Sami Zayn versus Strowman. Sami Zayn had to last at least ten minutes in this match. Well, technically, actually, he has had the last 10 minutes. It didn't matter. He had the last 10 minutes, and he won the match. That was pretty much all that he needed to do. Uh, he actually honestly fought really well, and I loved it. Uh, it was like he was just continuously trying to knock down Strowman, and it was just funny to watch. Um, after, I think, about six minutes or so, it was getting near the end. It was probably about like four minutes, five minutes left, somewhere around there. Uh, Mick Foley came out. He had a white towel on his hand. And it was like, oh, is he really good? I was like, don't fucking throw in the towel, Mick. Don't fucking throw away the towel. You know, Sami Zayn's got, well, I mean, even though I should have been rooting for Strowman, I was like, Sami Zayn can do this, you know, let him keep fighting. And he did. 
Uh, Strowman was like, throw it in, throw it in so you can save him and stuff. Uh, Sammy pretty much just started like groveling and begging him. He's like, no, I can do this. Let me fight. Let me fight. And he's like all on the ground. Like it was hilarious to watch. Uh, Sammy threw the towel to the crowd. Uh, and pretty much it was like Sammy Zayn for the rest of the match. Um, he threw, or he moved out of the way. So Braun would hit his face on a post. Moved out of the way, so Braun went through a barricade, pretty much destroyed, like, destroyed it. Kind of like Nia Jax going through the barricade trying to hit What's Her Toes uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, he made him hit his shoulder into the post, did a flying crossbody to Strowman, and then a haluva kick, and then the time was up, and Sammy had survived, and I was shocked. But Sammy put up a hell of a fight, and I should have put my money on him. I should have said I was going to, I should have predicted him to win. Uh, it would have been a lot better for me. Um, but still, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. And after the barricade, uh, Strowman got in at the count of nine uh, right before he got counted out. Jericho versus Rollins. This match, to be honest, I feel had, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you obviously saw what I posted. Um, but I feel like this had the, the opportunity and the, the amazingness to possibly be match of the year material. Not really match of the year, but probably a candidate to go into that spot it was an awesome match all around these two putting on a match against each other is just golden uh, i really love jericho versus rollins it's honestly probably one of my favorite feuds and stories going on right now with that whole thing um and watching rollins versus jericho takes away from rollins versus owens all the time uh it got off to a really good start um actually this has a milestone in it uh jericho is now fifth of all wwe superstars in uh top pay-per-view matches he's at like a thousand eighty or some shit like that i don't remember exactly what they said but it was in the thousands it was in like the early uh, thousand area but yeah he's fifth in total uh pay-per-view matches which is awesome he's also you know obviously a six-time world champion a nine-time intercontinental champion and all this stuff first ever undisputed wwe undisputed champion at least but yeah uh rollins barely beat a 10 count he was on the outside i don't remember exactly what jericho did but Rollins was like really close to missing out and he got in just in time. It was awesome. Uh, it was a very, very fast paced back and forth match. I love it. It's, it's two of the, it's kind of like a cruiserweight match only with bigger guys, <laughs> but it's like, you know, they have these two amazing superstars who can do all these amazing flips and shit and all these amazing moves. And you know, they, they really put it all in and I love it. Uh, pedigree attempt in, uh, reversed into a walls of Jericho attempt. Uh, and then uh, Rollins got out. He was kind of on the ground. Jericho went for a lion salt. Uh, it was pretty much reversed, I guess. Uh, Jericho ended up outside the ring because I think Rollins kicked him out. I don't remember exactly what happened. Uh, and then Rollins went for a suicide dive. Actually, I think it was right after the lion salt. He went out. Uh, after that, there was a bit of fighting on the outside. Jericho rolled. Ro Actually, no. I think Rollins rolled Jericho in, and then Jericho locked him in the walls again. Uh, Rollin got to the rope, barely, um, went for a frog splash, missed, uh, lion salt hit for a two count, um, and then right after that, uh, Falcon Arrow was hit for a two count, um, pedigree attempt, no go, buckle bomb attempt, no go, uh, walls were locked in again, uh, Rollins reversed it into a two count, uh, another fr uh, frog splash, Owens ran out, and this is the reason why I said it had the ability to be a match of the year uh, qualifier candidate, whatever you want to say, but then but then Owens had to come out and ruin it. And I I posted on Twitter. If you guys follow me on Twitter, I tweeted saying if there was no inter if there's no interference in this match, it definitely has the possibility of being a match of the year candidate. And then Owens came out and it ruined it for me. And I I still feel like it could be a match of the year candidate, but it's not going to be even close to winning now. Um, there was a roll up by Jericho, but the ref was distracted by Owens coming out, and it was only a two, and it only ended up being a two count. Uh, honestly, Jericho could have definitely won. Uh, Jericho started yelling at Owens because of this, and then Owens left. Uh, knee to the face. Uh, obviously, if you guys know what I mean, the knee to the face, the flying knee that uh, Rollins does. You know, he jumps and knees them in the face. Uh, there was a code breaker versus a new pedigree. One, two, three. Rollins wins. This puts me up. Do the do. Which is awesome. Uh, I honestly was scared that this match wasn't going to go the way I wanted because Owens came out. But, you know. Uh, Rich Swan versus Brian Kendrick versus DJ Perkins. 
best match of the night for me. No, uh, probably second best. Uh, Sasha versus Charlotte was really good, so I gotta put that one as first, especially with how freaking hard they fought each other and how tough it was. Um, but yeah, uh, Austin Aries was on commentary, so yeah, <laughs> good, good for that. That was awesome. I loved it. I was like, oh my god, it's too like I was on the phone with my girlfriend. I was trying not to scream. Oh my god, Austin Aries is on commentary. Yes, yes, yes. And luckily I didn't, but I, I did I did mark out a bit. Austin Aries is awesome. Uh, it's a cruiserweight match, so obviously it was a very, very crazy, awesome match. Uh, there was a lot of almost finishers. Uh, obviously, uh, I think at one point, Kendrick almost got, uh, I almost said French bread. <laughs> Sliced bread on Swan, uh, but didn't. He got reversed and got kicked out. Um, there was a double Huracurana by Swan. If you guys don't know what a Huracurana is, you grab your opponent by their neck with your legs. He grabbed both TJ Perkins and Brian Kendrick for that and rolled them out, and it was awesome. Uh, there was Captain's Hook locked in by Kendrick on Rich Swan. Uh, he ended up getting out, and then there's a knee bar locked in on Kendrick. Flip my page. Uh, that uh, I think he got out of that. Swan hit a splash. Uh, knee bar locked in afterwards. Um, Swan got to the rope, luckily. Uh, Perkins. Shit. Uh, oh yeah, per because it's a triple threat match, obviously there's no DQ. Whoops. Ah, oh, my butt. This chair's uncomfortable. Um, so Perkins held on to it for a while, trying to hurt Swan, I guess. Uh, there was a double kick to Brian Kendrick from Swan and Perkins. Uh, and then there was a kick to Perkins. One, two, three, Swan wins. Uh, I'm a little upset that my prediction wasn't fully right. Obviously, if you guys remember my predictions video, I said I had Swan uh, hitting his... I can't remember what his finisher's name is. You know the spinny kick thing he does. Uh, I had him hitting that on Kendrick and then winning with that, but he still won, so whatevs. Uh, next thing you know, Neville runs out, which was awesome. I was like, yes, Neville's back. Fucking finally. Yes, yes, yes. I'm like, is he actually going to join the Cruiserweight Division? I was going crazy. I love Neville, you guys. <laughs> I love a lot of wrestlers and hate a lot of wrestlers, and Neville's one of my favorites. Uh, he was cheering on Swan. He like came out clapping. He went in the ring, he started clapping for Swan, and then he attacked him, and then Perkins got involved, and then he attacked him. And I, I feel like Neville's going for the championship. I'm like, l let Swan have this for one more month. Not even kidding. The next month, the next, not next month's pay-per-view, but February's pay-per-view for Raw, have him win, or have him win on 205 Live. Just have Neville take the Cruiserweight Championship from Swan at some point in the near future. And I think it's going to be awesome, you know? And then have WrestleMania's match be Swan trying to get it back from him. Uh, uh, Owens went to apologize for fucking up Jericho's match and making him lose. Jericho would not open the door. He, it was completely fucking locked. Um, and yeah, you know, he tried to apologize and he said, you know, you can put me in the fucking list, the stupid list if you want. And he's like, you know, he said a bunch of stuff to him. And I, I, I feel bad for Kevin. But it's like, dude, it's your own fucking fault. You get involved all the time, and you're stupid. Uh, and then Jericho just stayed silent, and Kevin kind of left heartbroken. I was like, eh, I don't fucking care. I hate you. Uh, so that's for Charlotte Iron Man match. I love this. <coughs> Favorite match of the night right here. Definitely match of the night, if you ask me. It was really awesome. They put on a hell of a show. I just realized I wasn't rating the last matches. Uh, Strowman, Sammy... Uh, new wait, New Day Cesaro ten, obviously. Uh, Strowman, Sammy, probably about a six. Nah, eh, probably about a seven. I would have loved. Uh, I know it probably wouldn't have been possible, but if uh Sammy could have honestly got in uh the Blue Thunder Bomb onto uh or the Yeah Bomb Michinoku Driver, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, if he would have locked that in and got or hit that on Strowman, I would have went nuts and I'd be like, yep. I'm happy now. <laughs> that would have that would have made it better. But yeah, seven. Uh, Swan Kendrick Perkins ten. Just because it was awesome, I loved it. Actually, probably about nine and a half. If it would have been a pin to Kendrick instead of Perkins, it would have been a ten. But you know. Uh, all right, Sasha or Charlotte. I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Ten. Just it's a it's a ten. Uh, after the first five minutes, there was no falls, which honestly, I was like, fuck, man. Don't end it in a 0-0 draw like you did Sean and Brett, you fuckers. But no, 
Uh, honestly, it was a very good match. There's a lot of near falls. Uh, there's double knees to Charlotte outside the ring off the apron from Sasha. There's a backbreaker uh, locked in by Sasha. Not like the backbreaker in the bank statement, but like an actual just like backbreaker uh, straight jacket move. Um, uh, after the first 10 minutes, there was still no falls, which just nuts, you know what I mean? Uh, suicide dive to Charlotte by Sasha. Uh, uh, and then Sasha was kind of standing on the apron, and then her legs, Charlotte kicked her leg out from under, and she went face first into the steel steps. And I honestly didn't think she was going to win after that. I was like, fuck, she's going to lose right here. She's going to, you know, falls. But nope. Uh, Charlotte decided to not take the count out. She went for a pin and got a two count. Um, there was still a lot of near falls after this point. Uh, there was after 15 minutes, no fucking pins. No, no falls whatsoever. Still zero to zero. Uh, Charlotte continued to attack Sasha's face. Continued, just like continuously trying to break her down. Uh, Sasha got a nice burst of energy, uh, missed a crossbody, natural selection for a two count by Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte was going to go for a moonsault, but Sasha stopped her. Uh, Charlotte reversed it into a natural selection off of the top rope. Uh, and first fall to Charlotte at 10 minutes 46 seconds left. Uh, Charlotte went for another quick one, didn't get it. Uh, Sasha got a fall at 8.23. She didn't really do a move. It was just random and weird stuff that she didn't do a pin. Uh, a missed moonsault by Charlotte. Uh, bank statement locked in by Sasha. Charlotte tapped. Uh, Sasha has two falls up to one at six minutes, three seconds left. Uh, I forgot to say, oh no, I, I said the time for Sasha's. Or, yeah. Uh, Charlotte went after Sasha's leg because she kind of hurt her leg and... She just continuously went after it, obviously. Uh, figure eight uh, was countered. She tried to get it in, but couldn't. Uh, Sasha's leg kept bending in a really weird way every time. A leg lock was locked in. Uh, it was reversed into a two count, though, for the first one. Uh, figure four locked in, reversed, reversed again. One minute left on the clock, still two to one. Um, Sasha could still be injured even if she won. You know, she was locked into a figure eight for a while. Uh, 30 seconds left on the clock. With 10 seconds left, there's a figure eight locked in. And then Charlotte, and then with like two seconds left, Sasha tapped. And it was two to two, draw. Uh, I honestly was like, is Sasha just gonna take it, you know, and say, I'm done, I can't, I can't fight anymore and keep her championship, which is what I would have done, to be honest. But no, she kept fighting, uh, which obviously, if you guys don't know, a champion has the option to continue, or to, the champion typically ends the match, but, you know, the champion typically wins if it's a draw. But there are certain times when it can be continued in sudden death rules, which this was. Uh, and Sasha, for some reason, didn't say, I can't fight anymore. Because she probably would have kept her title if she would have done that. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Charlotte continued to attack her left leg. Uh, quick figure four attempt. And then reversed into a two count by Sasha. Getting near the end of this, finally. Uh, with... 23 minutes on the fucking clock for my video. Holy shit. Uh, Sasha was bleeding. I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if it was her nose or if she bit her tongue or something, but she was definitely bleeding and it was draining. If you guys go to my Twitter, I have the Game Station 5 again, or just look up Space Out Gaming on Twitter, I tweeted a picture of it saying how badly it looked and it was nuts. So yeah. Uh, Banks spent... Banks statement. No. Banks statement locked in. Uh, Charlotte kind of went after the left leg. Um... Got her out of there, closed into figure four, figure eight was bridged, and Sasha tapped. Charlotte won three to two, kept her stupid fucking pay-per-view undefeated streak in the main roster, got her title back for a four-time championship, and now at least the fucking fl 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 flip-flopping between Sasha and Charlotte is done. If you guys can't tell, I've had a long fucking day. I'm tired. Uh, Kevin Owens versus Rowan Reigns. Eight. Nah, actually, probably seven. Did end with uh, Owens winning. I can say that right now. Uh, it was a very good match, all in all. Uh, r uh, r uh, bleh. I kind of stopped focusing on this for some reason. I didn't realize until like the match was like five minutes in. I was like, fuck, I'm supposed to be fucking writing shit down for this. So yeah, uh, Owens rolled out at the start of the match. Uh, KO, you know, he was doing that stupid yelling and bitching thing. Uh, I think he actually went for a pin and it was a one count. He's like, that was three. Like he always fucking does, you know what I mean? Uh, back and forth punches uh, uh, for a while. I'm, I, I skipped all over on this match because I was too lazy. Uh, there was a clothesline to Owens, Samoan drop reversed into a German suplex, I think there was a pin after that. Um, Samoan drop after a reverse cannonball for a two count. 
Uh, Superman punch reversed into a DDT for a two count. Uh, Cannonball with Reigns mocker, you know the uh, thing he does before a spear. He mocked him, Owens did. Uh, Superman punch for a two count. Suplex attempt stopped by Owens, or superplex attempt, I should say. But then a Superman punch to the face on the top rope. Uh, superplex reversed. No, wait. What? Superplex reversed. I thought he got. Oh, no, no. Superplex reversed. I can't remember what the move is called. It was kind of like a Samoan drop, I guess, but I can't exactly remember what the move's called. If you guys watched Roblox on the line, you know the move I'm talking about. Uh, it was reversed into a two count. Uh, Swanton by Owens. Straight to Reigns' knees, because uh, Reigns reversed it. Uh, Reigns prepared for a spear, and Owens rolled out. Uh, quick drive by kick by Reigns. If you don't know what that is, it's where he pretty much runs and kicks them on the bottom rope, and it's kind of cool. Uh, another drive by kick attempt. Nope. Two kicks to Reigns by Owens. One at when he was on the bottom ropes, and one to put him onto the German announce table. Uh, two bullfrog splashes or frog splashes. I don't. I thought he called them bullfrog splashes. I could be wrong. Uh, by Owens onto Reigns on the German announce table. Uh, the second one busted through the table. And do tables not count as disqualification anymore? I, I'm confused. Cause I thought this was a DQ mat. Like this had DQ. Cause I, I, there's a point later in the match where I say it to you guys. But I was like, what the fuck? Shouldn't that be DQ right there on Owens for? But I was wrong. I guess I don't know. Uh, Reigns got in at the count of nine. Like right after nine count, he got in. It was awesome. Uh, splash for a two count by Owens right after Reigns got in. Sit out power bomb by Reigns for a two count. Uh, spear reversed into a knee for a two count. Pop a power bomb. Reigns gets his leg onto the rope, and if he didn't, I, I think it would have been over there. Spear by Reigns after Owens tried to hit him with the belt. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which is what I'm saying. Like that would DQ him, but wouldn't him busting through the announce table also DQ him? Like last time I checked, those are tables. That's a weapon. What the fuck? But whatever. Uh, Jericho came in out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting him to pop up actually. Uh, was looking like he was gonna go after Reigns, and then Code Breaker Owen gave a Code Breaker to Owens, and got Reigns disqualified. Owens won the match by DQ, which still confuses me because he went through the table. But yeah, that's pretty much it for Roblox end of the line. Uh, all in all, probably a total of six out of ten. Uh, for more reasons than just the matches, some of the matches not being too great. Uh, the new announced guy that replaced Lita and King, I don't like him. I really don't. He's really stupid. Cause they were talking about, oh, do you think if you know Chris Jericho wouldn't have interfered with all the matches, do you think? R Rollins would have the title already and the guy's like no there's no way Rollins would not have the title I'm like are you a fucking mor- I'm like this guy's a fucking moron on Twitter I'm like obviously Rollins would have the title if fucking Owens wouldn't constantly be getting help from Jericho like seriously look back at both their Hell in a Cell match their pay-per-view match before that at Clash of Champions which I didn't get the chance to watch but like a lot of their matches it's like dude Owens interfering or Jericho interfering in the match is why Rollins lost, especially at Hell in the Cell. Rollins could have had that if Owens wouldn't or if Jericho wouldn't have me uh, messed around and fucking gotten into the match. So yeah, the guy's kind of stupid, and so yeah, that was the main reason it put me off on the pre-show and stuff. But yeah, there's there's other reasons, but I'm not gonna go into them. I have another video to record. I've been Cameron. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Stay golden. Peace.